Hello, welcome to Prezium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 33 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about some of the important concepts related to functions. Specifically, we'll be looking at deterministic and non-deterministic functions, how to encrypt and schema bind functions. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 30, 31 and 32 of this video series. Now, what are deterministic and non-deterministic functions and what are the differences between them? This is a very commonly asked interview question as well. Now let's understand these with an example. Now if you look at this employees table, I've got five rows in this table. Now look at this. When I execute this, select count of star from TBL employees, count function returns the total number of records in the table employees. Okay, there are five records, so the function returns five. So no matter how many times I execute this query, you know, it returns five to me. Okay, now if I change the database state in the sense if I insert new records or delete the existing records and try to select count, you know, that's when it changes. For example, if I delete one row and try to execute select count of star, it's going to give me four records. But given that the database state has not changed and I haven't changed the input parameters of this function, you know, it's going to give me the same result. So we can determine the same result. Okay, let's look at an other example. For example, we have a function called square function. Okay, which will square the number that we provide to it. For example, if I pass in three and I execute this query, look at this. Every time you execute this, it gives you nine. Okay, every time you execute that, it gives you nine. So you can determine the result of this function. So let's look at the definition of deterministic function. A deterministic function always returns the same result any time they are called with a specific set of input values and given the same state of the database. Okay, so here we have not changed the input value. So when we execute this function, I get the same result no matter how many times I execute that. Okay, and along the same lines, if you look at the count function, this is going to give me the total number of records unless I change the state of the database in the sense I either delete or insert new records, you know, the count value is going to change. Otherwise, it's not going to change in any way. So deterministic functions always return the same result any time they are called with a specific set of input values and given the same state of the database. And examples, square, power, sum, average, and count. In fact, all aggregate functions are deterministic functions. Okay, now let's look at non-deterministic function. Obviously, non-deterministic functions, you know, are opposite to deterministic functions. For deterministic functions, they always return the same result for the given state and for the given set of input values, whereas non-deterministic functions may return different values for the same spe set of specific input values and even if the database state has not changed. Okay, the classic example is the get date function. Okay, no, we didn't change any records in the table. We also didn't change the input parameters. Get date function doesn't take any parameters. Okay, so now if I execute this function, I get some time. So 280, 25, 33, 25 seconds. Now when I execute that, 33, 30 seconds. Okay, so every time you execute that, the time is going to change for the same set of input values. In fact, here this function doesn't take any input parameters. And and even if the database state has not changed, I'm going to get different result every time I execute this function. Okay, so that's an example of non-deterministic function. Even current timestamp, even current timestamp is going to return the current date and time on the SQL Server. So obviously even this is non-deterministic. And there is a function called rand function. We have spoke about, spoken about this as well in the previous sessions of this video series. Okay, we use random function to get a random number. And we know that this function takes a parameter called a seed. Okay, now let's look at this function. Because a random function can act as deterministic function at times, and at times it can become non-deterministic function. Now look at this. When I say select rand, this function is expecting an integer parameter, seed value. Now if I pass, let's say, seed 1, and when I execute this function, look at this, I get this value, I execute this again, I get the same value. So for the given seed, 
no matter how many times you execute this rand function you get the same number so at this point this is a deterministic function if you provide the seed value the function is deterministic on the other hand if I remove the seed value and try to execute this every time I execute I get a different result look at that okay so if the seed value is not provided random is non-deterministic function okay so rand function can behave as both deterministic and non-deterministic depending on how you execute that if you execute it with the same seed value then it's gonna be deterministic function otherwise it's non-deterministic in nature alright the other two important concepts that we'll talk about is encrypting the function definition and schema binding okay encrypting the function definition is the same as encrypting the stored procedure definition we spoke about stored procedures in part 18 of this video series and we have seen how to encrypt a stored procedure along the same lines we encrypt a function as well let's look at an example so let's say I have this table called TBL employees now what I want to do is I want to create a simple function which gets the name of the employee given the ID again if you're new to functions I told you please refer to parts 30 31 and 32 of this video series we have discussed about them extensively there so let's create this function a scalar function that's going to return the name of the employee provided we give it the ID so create function fn underscore let's call this get name by ID and let's pass in the ID parameter of type integer and this function is going to return nvercar because we want the name back so nvercar of 30 as begin and so what we want we want to select the name of the person so we will say select name from tbl employees table where id is equal to whatever id we are passing into this function which is nothing but at id all right so let's create this function uh, in correct syntax returns instead of return so let's execute that oh we need to have a return keyword here because we want to return the name of the person execute that okay the function completed successfully now obviously in order to execute this function we already know that select DBO we have to give it the two-part name again we spoke about this in detail when we spoke about scalar functions in SQL Server so let's say when I pass in ID 1 so obviously if you look at TBL employees table ID 1 is Sam so we get Sam back okay fine now if I want to look let's say I have deleted this text from here now I want to look at this fn get name by id function uh, maybe I want to alter that or for some other reason I want to look at the definition or the implementation of this function how do I do that there are two ways one is you can actually use a system stored procedure called sp underscore help text to get the definition of this function so sp underscore help text and then provide the name of the function whose text you want when you press F5 you should get the definition of the function that's one way another way is if you go to the functions folder within the database and then expand since this is a scalar function if you expand scalar functions folder you should see your function there when you right click on that script function as alter to new query editor window you should get that function implementation there okay that's another way all right so I get this function so when I use this SP underscore help text system stored procedure I am able to retrieve the text of this particular function now let's say we don't want to we don't want to allow the users to these to see the text of our function or stored procedure can we encrypt absolutely you can encrypt and it's very easy to do okay so let's copy paste the implementation of the function all you do is you use with encryption option okay before as you will say with encryption that's it now since we are altering here if we try to create again we'll get an error because that function already exists there so you will have to alter the function obviously to alter the function we use the alter statement and press F5 now the function should have been encrypted now if I try to view the text of the function either using SP underscore help text system stored procedure 
or graphically, I get a message stating that the text for the object is encrypted. Okay, if I try to view it even by using the designer, we get the same message stating that you know this is the text is encrypted. You can see that here. So if you want to prevent the end users from looking at the definition of your function, there is a way you know you can actually encrypt that using with encryption option for your function and stored procedures as well. Now can we decrypt it? Absolutely, there are ways to do it, but that's beyond the scope of this video series. We'll talk about that maybe in a later session. All right, so that's about encrypting function. So we have learned how to encrypt stored procedures text using with encryption option in part 18 of this video series. Along the same lines, you can also encrypt a function text. Once encrypted, you cannot view the text of the function using SP underscore help text system stored procedure or graphically using the designer. If you try to, you will get a message stating that the text for this object is encrypted. There are ways to decrypt it, but we'll talk about them maybe in a later session. So we use with encryption option there. All right, now what do we mean by schema binding a function? This is very important and a best practice as well whenever you're creating a function, okay? So if you look at this function, let's remove this with encryption option. Let's alter this function once again so that we can get our, you know, when I say SP help text, I get it back now because I removed that with encryption. Now, if you look at this particular function, this function is dependent on TBL employees table. Okay. Now, obviously, if you want to execute this function, you will say select DBO, which is nothing but the schema name, dot the name of the function and the parameter it expects. Okay, so when I execute that, it executes fine now without any problem. Now let us say somebody has deleted this table. Okay, now look at this. This function is one object, table is another object. Now I can delete this table TBL employees by using drop statement. So drop table TBL employees. So when we delete this table, okay, command completed successfully, the table got deleted. Okay, now obviously when I try to execute this function, look at this, when we try to execute this function, let's see what's going to happen. It's going to fail because when you execute this function, what happens? This function tries to select the name from TBL employees for employee ID 1, but the table itself is not there. So we get an error message saying, I cannot find object TBL employees, invalid object TBL employees. Let's see that. So when we execute that, we get that message invalid object named TBL employees. And that makes sense, right? Now, so don't you think this is bad? You know, you have a function which is referring this table TBL employees, but you are allowing the table to be deleted while that function is still referring to that table. Okay, so your function breaks now. Now, can I prevent, you know, these kind of changes to the underlying objects? Now, this function is dependent on TBL employees. So I don't want anybody to change the table TBL employees in any way that would affect this function. Is it possible? Absolutely. How do we do that? That's what, you know, with schema binding option is used for. Okay, now let's recreate this table. I have the script for that already, just to create the table and populate uh, the rows within that. So let's execute the script. All right, so I have the table back now. So the table should be there. So obviously now if I execute the function, it executes successfully. Now let's alter the function to basically include with schema binding option. So I'm saying with schema binding. Now let's execute this. Okay, so this is very important. Look at the message that we get. It's saying we cannot schema bind function fn get name by id because name tbl employees is invalid. Okay, for schema binding, name must be in a two-part format, and an object uh, and an object cannot reference itself. Okay, so the name should be in two parts. That is, you should specify the two-part naming convention. That is, the schema name and the actual table name. So here, the schema is DBO, standing for database owner. So once you specify that, then you will be able to schema bind. So basically what you are saying is this function is bound to this table 
within DBO schema, the database owner schema. Okay, so let's now execute this. Command completed successfully. So we are schema bound now. So now if I try to drop this table employees, let's see what happens. Look at that. We get the error message stating cannot drop table TBL employees because it is being still referenced by object F and get name by ID. Okay, so we are safe now. If somebody wants to accidentally or inadvertently delete or change the table in a way that affects you know this function it won't be allowed not only deleting if somebody tries to change you know drop this name column or ID column your function will still be affected so these kind of changes or deletions will not be allowed as long as your function is schema bound okay so that's the advantage of using schema binding option so schema binding option specifies that the function is bound to the database object that it references. When schema binding is specified, the base object cannot be modified in any way that would affect the function definition. The function definition itself must be first modified or dropped to remove dependencies on the object that is to be modified. And obviously to use schema binding option, you just specify with schema binding in the definition of your function and if you want to encrypt you just specify with encryption it's so simple on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET and C Sharp interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day